because that's what's causing the problem of inflation. So the only way to fix the Nobel Prize amazingness, that problem that Ben Bernanke caused of inflation is really what it did. So he basically got a Nobel Prize for creating inflation. Good for him. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris from Life 180, and uh, my head just about exploded. Um, my buddy, Sean here, who helps me with all the video stuff behind the scenes, just was like, did you see this Reddit? Ben Bernanke just won a Nobel Prize. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I, I gotta hear more about this. And so I uh, pulled up an article, and so there's a BBC article, and I'm going through it. And so what I wanna do is I, I actually wanna just share this article really quickly and uh, and just kinda like pop myself in the corner here and, and talk about this craziness of Ben Bernanke winning the Nobel Prize. Now, Check this out. So Ben Bernanke, he he's they're they're talking about what he um, what he's known for, so on and so forth. Um, and ultimately, the tools that he deployed were also used by the Fed and other central banks in 2020 to stabilize the economy when the COVID pandemic hit and major and other countries went into lockdown. So basically, what he uh, I think won the Nobel Prize for was the fact that. He's done research, so he is one of three people to win the Nobel Prize here. He won it with a group. He's part of a, a group. Uh, he's now, it says he's a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute. Um, and ultimately, trying to find here, uh, the work focused on the importance of avoiding bank runs. The insights prove, improved our ability to have both serious crisis and expensive, to avoid both serious crisis and expensive bailouts. So he's winning this Nobel Prize for the research that he did to avoid a serious crisis and avoid bank bailouts. Here's the crazy part to this to me. Everything that he did back in 2006, 7, 8, leading up to the financial crisis, during the financial crisis, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, quantitative easing one, two, three, everything that he did has led us to where we are today. Now, it's great that we've lived in this bull market that, that, you know, we, yeah, I'm not gonna deny, his policies stimulated the greatest bull run of all time. But the problem is, we also live in the most artificial economy of all time. And the bottom line is his policies are what have driven us to this point in time. I agree, we should never have serious bank bailouts. Now, his research has done things back in the Great Depression that he was concerned that gr like uh, uh, significant bank runs, I'll say, were what led to um, were what led to a prolonged Great Depression, and so that's why he wanted the Fed to intervene so much back in the Great Recession. Is because hey, we didn't want the depression to go on so long, and so he inter intervened. Uh, they lowered interest rates. They had quantitative easing one, two, and three. They printed trillions of dollars. They bought mortgage-backed securities. They bought treasury bonds with the government. They stimulated the economy in so many different ways, enabling us to live in this cheap money environment, enabling us to you know, kind of live with our heads in the sand and think everything was okay. And the bottom line is we've been living in, in a science fiction movie when it comes to economics over the past 12 years, past 14 years. And what happened in 2008 is everything came to a head, everything needed to be flushed out, and the bad debt, the bad policies, the bad monetary policy, the bad government policy, the bad economic decisions, the bad uh, business decisions that were made by people had to be flushed out. Let's face it, these banks made decisions to loan money in, and, and, and to have books of business that were high risk in certain ways and that blew up in their face and they got bailed out by the government. That's where the too big to fail came in. Uh, obviously Bear and Lehman got, uh, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers got uh, their heads cut off and, and they were let go. But all the other banks, the, the Chase's, Morgan Stanley's, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all these other massive banks were too big to fail, you know? And, and they benefited from a consolidation of everything and, and new policy and cheap money and money printing. And that's where we are today. And you can't print and inject trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars uh, and, and they're giving him credit. This is the funny thing to me. This is the, like, it's, 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 it's pathetically laughable is that he won a Nobel Prize for this saying that it's, it's preventing bank runs and, and, uh, and, and economic crisis. Yet this economic crisis right now is due to 
and, and they said it helped avoid it during COVID. This crisis that we're in right now, and make no mistake about it, this is a crisis, is happening because of the policies that Ben Bernanke used back then. But I got news for you. Everything Ben Bernanke did in 2008, we can't do it again. So he's getting credit for something that is, it was done again in COVID by printing, printing and injecting trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, even more than was done when Ben Bernanke was the chairman of the Fed. But now what happens is a couple of years after we did it to get through the pandemic with COVID, now we're dealing with the ramifications in that because that money's in circulation. It's jamming up inflation. Everybody was stoked about their two to $3,000 of stimulus money. And now the inflation itself is gonna cost them way more than what they got in a benefit just to get through the pandemic, right? And so now you look at it and where are we? What do we have now? We have all the ammo that Ben Bernanke used lowering interest rates, printing money, buying securities, everything that he did, we can't do anymore. That all has to be unwound because that's what's causing the problem of inflation. So the only way to fix the Nobel Prize amazingness, that problem that Ben Bernanke caused of inflation is really what it did. So he basically got a Nobel Prize for creating inflation. Good for him, you know? And the only way we can fix this Nobel Prize problem <laughs> that he caused is to unwind the policies that he won the Nobel Prize for and, and, and do these things of, you know, instead of buying the mortgage-backed securities, cutting that off, increasing interest rates instead of lowering them, doing things so we can make our currency stronger, reduce inflation. And what is that gonna do, by the way? It's gonna tank the market. It's going to, there's no way around it. And so when it tanks the market, what is it, what, where's that gonna bring us? It's gonna bring us back to where we started. That's where it's gonna bring us. And so what did he really accomplish? He accomplished kicking the can down the road for uh, you know, a decade and a half. And eventually you're just, you just gotta pay the piper. You, there, there's no free lunch in this world you know, when it comes to economics and when it comes to this stuff. I mean, when it comes to life in general, there's no free lunch, let's face it. And, and you can't, you can't, fake the principles of economics. You can't get around the truth of how money works. You, you, you just can't beat the system. It's like gravity, what goes up must come down. If, if you print money, if you inject and give free money to people and you mess up the supply and demand issue, you may get through it for a period, it may feel really good, but it's like a heroin addict. If you get a heroin addict, and you just get them going and you know they're in pain and you give them enough drugs, but eventually they're gonna get up to enough drugs where either the drug is gonna kill them and they're gonna overdose from it, which is what we're getting to right now, or we're gonna to get to the place where the heroin addict wants to get sober, wants to get clean, wants to get off the dope, wants to you know, get their life back on track and flush the garbage out of their life, right? Out of their system. And that's what we're doing right now. And Jerome Powell, you know what? Like, I don't know how much guts Jerome Powell has to actually implement and stay the course of what he's doing with raising rates every single month. I don't think he's raising them enough, but I think a lot of people think he's, he's doing too much because he's obviously hurting the economy um, because look at the markets, right? So I don't know if he has the guts to stay the course and do what he needs to do and hold fast. But if he does, ultimately what's gonna happen is we're gonna wind up way back, the markets are all gonna be at levels that we haven't seen for a decade, a decade and a half. And you know what? I think that's what needs to happen. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are gonna get hurt. Uh, sadly, it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people put themselves at risk unnecessarily. And, and it's one of the reasons that I run this channel, one of the reasons that I try to coach people the way that I do, one of the reasons that I focus on safe money first. And I think one of the big challenges, and I, I'm, I've, I've done my, what I call my Life 180 Pyramid Talk, where it talks about financial structure, right? I call it the Pyramid Talk because look at the Egyptian pyramids, they're the most stable structures the world has ever seen. Every storm, every economy, every regime, every everything that Egypt has ever seen, those things are still standing. And you need to set your finances up the same way to be able to weather every storm, to be able, be able to weather every political regime, to be able to weather everything that's happening in the world, right? And so, my encouragement to you is don't take this lightly. What's happening right now, it's, it's, it's pathetic that this man won a Nobel Prize for something that ultimately is now hurting us and something that ultimately I think three, four, five years from now, we're gonna look back at and we're gonna realize 
he won a Nobel Prize for the thing that actually caused the problem now, right? It's, it's just sad. Like, I, I, I got no words. I, I don't even, I, I don't know. I, I have nothing to say on that, I guess. I, I, I've said it all. And so here's the deal. If you want to learn more about this, go check out my Life 180 Pyramid Talk. It will, it'll help you figure out how to structure your finances better. Um, it'll help you figure out during what's happening, during what's coming in this process uh, uh, that, that of this unwinding of low interest rates, unwinding of the Federal Reserve buying our debt, unwinding of the stimulation, stimulation of the economy through f cheap and free money. As all that unwinds and the US dollar gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and that's ultimately gonna hurt the rest of the world, right? And a lot of people right now are talking that the US dollar is actually gonna get destroyed through strength, which is just mind numbing to me that that could be the case. The, the fact that a strong dollar is bad for America is, I have no words once again. Like I, I, I just, I don't understand the way these people think. It may not be good for the rest of the world. And I think it's sad for the rest of the world that we have that much control, that we have that much power, that we are able to do this and, and inflect this policy that benefits us and hurts the rest of the world. But guess what? I got news for you. That's the way this has been going for 50 years, 100 years, since 1944, guys. Bretton Woods Act, 1944, we were given the world's reserve currency because we had the greatest reserve uh, of gold in the world. Guess what? We no longer have the greatest reserve of gold in the world. Uh, we went off the gold standard in 1971, Richard Nixon. Since that point in time, we've been living in a fiat currency world. Nothing has been backed, nothing has been guaranteed. It's only been the goodwill, the faith, and the trust of the U.S population that is that is backed it in the world population their faith and trust in us and while everything we're doing is hurting the world right now and strengthening our dollar it's going to hurt our markets make no mistake about it but the the greatest asset right now ironically and it's once again it's it almost makes me laugh it's the u.s dollar is like the best asset in the world u.s treasuries are almost the best asset in the world right now it's it's insanity. Like, I feel like I'm living in a science fiction movie. And while it's hurting everybody now, don't forget, we've been doing this. Our monetary policy, we've been living a lifestyle because of our status as a world reserve currency where the rest of the world has been financing our lifestyle, financing our mistakes, financing our wars, buying our bonds, buying our debt, doing all these things for us. This has been happening forever. Now, this is the most extreme, but I got news for you. We all talk about compounding. We all talk about earn un uninterrupted compounding with your money. Well, guess what? Compounding works with everything. Compounding works with 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 this with debt. Like if if, if with with our monetary policy, there's a reason right now we, we our our government debt goes from 31 trillion or 30 trillion to almost 32 trillion in a couple months right now. And back in the 80s and 90s, it would take years to accumulate a trillion dollars in debt. It's because compounding is working against our debt, right? So compounding is either gonna be something you get working for you or it's gonna be something you get working against you. And unfortunately, because of the fact that our government is the worst money manager that the history of the world has ever seen and the rest of the world has put their faith and trust in us and we've been benefiting from that, now it's just hitting this tipping point where it's beyond control. And, you know, it's that old adage, you got to put the mask on yourself before you help the people around you and the plane's going down. Well, guess what? The plane's going down and the Federal Reserve is going to do what? Put the mask on ourselves, take care of ourselves, make our dollars stronger. So, you know, it doesn't matter about what the markets are. Remember, the Federal Reserve's responsibility, their number one and only responsibility is to manage the purchasing power of our dollar, to control inflation, to preserve the integrity of the dollar. If we allow that to go inflation crazy, guess what? Then we lose that trust from the rest of the world. The, the Federal Reserve fails in its role. It's not the Federal Reserve's job to, uh, to keep the stock market going, to keep unemployment low. Now, those are metrics that impact consumer confidence, which then can in impact inflation and, and buyer behavior and stuff of that nature. And so, I'm not saying that the Federal Reserve doesn't look at those metrics, right? It does, absolutely. But the bottom line is, it's, it, it's their number one job is, make no mistake about it, is 
inflation and controlling it. And so the fact that people are like, oh, they're not going to keep doing it. I actually think they probably will. And they're probably going to hold out longer than most people think. I think we're going to see something that's much worse than people realize. And the good news is it can be a really good thing for you if you prepare yourself for it and you have your money in the right place and you're prepared. I think is where I've heard a lot of people say that we're coming into the sale of a lifetime right now. A lot of really, really smart people have their money on the sidelines and they're, they're waiting to buy real estate. They're waiting to buy crypto and stocks and other investments and businesses. Pretty much every asset in the world is going to be on sale if you just are patient enough to be able to ride this out. And so, yeah, that's it. Um, once again, check out my Life 180 Pyramid Talk video. I had to hop on here and do this. I, I, I just think it's insane. I think historically we're going to look back at this in the, in the very near future and um, be really disappointed in the fact that this guy won a Nobel Prize for something that's really destroying the economy right now. And um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, any comments, any questions? I'm sure there's going to be several of them. Comment in the comment section below. I'll engage with every single one. And uh, that's it. Until next video, have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.